Oh, thank you for joining the, the best session in the <laughs> whole program. <laughs> You're a lucky person. <laughs> this is the sexiest session. <laughs> so forget about the big names. We don't have a super big name, but you know, <laughs> super good contents. <laughs> that is about Japan. So how many of you have uh, uh, said it in the, uh, our DPM session, public and private? How many of you? You really enjoy light? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we have unfinished business. It's a continuing discussion. So, so we have a uh, you know very fantastic panelists. Uh, so we, I, I've been chairing Japan session for three years in a row, and uh, I'm getting tired about uh, talking the same thing. But this year, <laughs> so we focus on the investment. We have a lot of money, right? So how to invest and uh, how well we receive more investment from the world. Outside, we have more money. Those money have to look for the opportunity in my country. So we took uh, two steps. One is about uh, Japan's outbound investment. And second phase is Japan's inbound, inbound to Japan's market investment. So allow me to introduce uh, the fantastic panelist. Uh, so which order? Uh, in Japan, the seniority system is still going on. <laughs> but uh, no, politically, I have to be co politically correct. I cannot ask age. So uh, <laughs> let me guess. Uh, probably uh, Stevenson. So. You are yes. the yes, uh, youngest. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Steve Sun is uh, the very successful business uh, leader in Hong Kong, but he's keep uh, investing in Japan. So most of the Hong Kong people, big uh, uh, business tycoons, uh, tend to invest into real estate. But uh, this person is very unique. He's investing in real business and technologies in Japan, uh, such as the uh, low-cost carrier airlines and the uh, uh, high-tech uh, startups. So he will uh, share a very interesting view on um, how Japan is an interesting place to, for you to make investment. Uh, after Steve-san, who will be the Shibata-san? <laughs> It's the second young guest. So uh -huh. Shibata San is a legendary uh, you know, financier in Japanese investment circle. He used to be a president and the CEO of the Nomura Securities. You know the Nomura Securities, the biggest investment bank in Japan. Then he moved to the Nikko Asset Management. This is a big news in Japan. Normally, normal people never go to rival competitor number two. Nico. So it's more like a uh, Goldman Sachs president going to the uh, Morgan Stanley president. So <laughs> he <laughs> contributed a lot to Japanese government, especially the FSA, Japan's FSA's uh, you know, uh, financial reform regulation, uh, financial uh, regulation reform discussion. He has a lot of view and a very important insight and advice to the government and the business. Then, uh, probably Sasaki-san. <laughs> <laughs> Sasaki-san is, uh, you know, Japanese version of the SEC chairman, you know, top of the regulator or the watchdog of the <laughs> stock market. <laughs> very, I must be very nice to him. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very, you know, pinkish. So <laughs> but he's very, very articulate. And the SP FSA is now doing a lot of reform try to mobilize the money, try to welcome more investment uh, of Japan in, from inside outside. So he will talk a lot about that. The finally, Nakayama-san. Nakayama-san is coming to this conference, uh, you know, three years in a row. But basically, he's a, a, you know, he's a, a very promising and a rising star in Japanese politics, ruling party LDP. But he's a geopolitics specialist. I mean, geopolitics and the security, national security, uh, cyberspace, defense, such kind of guy. Why we invite uh, Nakayama-san in this panel? 
It's uh, related to the story told by our deputy prime minister yesterday. You know, geopolitics is uh, playing a big role on Japanese uh, future, North Korea, China. So he will touch upon uh, geopolitical impact into Japanese uh, investment opportunities. So lastly, myself, uh, very reserved outfit, uh, Kotaro Tamura. I'm a American Institute Asia Fellow. Uh, I wear many hats. I used to be a politician. Uh, I used to be a colleague of uh, Nakayama-san. Uh, I, was, I was in the Senate, Senator, and uh, I was uh, uh, Parliamentary Secretary for Cabinet Office in charge of fiscal and economic policy making under the Abe very first administration, kind of an economic advisor to Prime Minister Abe. Now I teach at the National University of Singapore geopolitics at the Lee Kuan Yew School, and I do advise several companies. And, uh, you know, I chair several sessions already, and the people, uh, you know, uh, plays uh, my outfit, not uh, my, my performance. So this is my uh, family business, the largest uh, business suit supplier in Japan. So if you are interested in my suits, uh, come <laughs> to me, and I give you a super discount. <laughs> Thank you. So let's kick start the session. Uh, as uh, our Deputy Prime Minister mentioned, we have a lot of money sleeping in bank account and a corporate account. He said uh, 9 trillion yen is sleeping in the deposit and the 6 trillion yen in retained earnings in the corporate account. Those money is not no mobilized even in the circumstances of the negative interest kick in. This is very, very strange. Yesterday, Mark Milken joined the uh, DPM's uh, private session. He keeps saying that. So I want to know the reason why Japan has a lot of money under the negative interest rate, but nobody make investment. Why is this happening? Why is this happening, uh, Sasaki-san? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Tadama-san. Uh, first, uh, good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, the first time to be at the, uh, this international conference. Uh, as Tamara introduced, uh, I'm working for the FSA, Financial Services Agency, uh, dealing with oversight of capital markets and in the past uh, oversight of banking institutions. Uh, the, current, the, the question about the mobilization of huge financial assets uh, in visually and also for corporate, that's a very, very difficult uh, challenge. But it's uh, one of the top priorities of the current Japanese government, including our FSA. Uh, as Taimonan-san mentioned, uh, such large financial assets are first for individuals and also for corporate, and also uh, the, the behavior of the uh, institutional investors, uh, including pension fund. So for these uh, players, uh, we have been taking a number of measures. For individuals, uh, yes, uh, Still, they have a huge amount uh, of banking deposits, but we try to, to move, uh, mobilize uh, these banking uh, deposits uh, to more uh, uh, diversified investment uh, opportunities. Uh, for, for example, uh, we, uh, together with the uh, securities industry, uh, two years ago, we created a new investment scheme, uh, individual savings account uh, for individuals uh, with tax-exempt uh, uh, incentives. Uh, we have noted a significant increase and also recently we have added uh, another type of uh, this individual savings account. So this uh, might encourage uh, the mobilization of individual assets. Second, for corporate uh, retained earnings, uh, that's uh, due to a kind of uh, a lack of uh, pressures. Uh, uh, however, uh, for the past two years, lots of ch changes, reforms for corporate governance uh, in relation to the public companies. Uh, Corporate Governance Code uh, was introduced, uh, implemented, uh, to require more uh, growth-oriented uh, corporate governance uh, for listed companies, and also for institutional investors, uh, stewardship code, which require more engagements or more pressures to the corporate, uh, the corporate sectors. That's another uh, challenge. Uh, for institutional investors, including uh, GPIF or uh, Japan Postal Savings, uh, uh, the government, and together with these institutions, uh, have changed the portfolio uh, that is uh, more investment uh, into the securities or stocks 
or not just the domestic, a more uh, diversified uh, foreign uh, stocks. So these measures uh, have been taken, and we have noted uh, some progress, but still uh, in the pipeline, in the, in, in, in the middle way. So that's why, uh, again, uh, FSA, together with other agencies, we have taken additional uh, reforms, uh, including the revision of the Corporate Governance Code, Stewardship Code, uh, and also uh, lots of reforms for corporate sector. So thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, our DPM mentioned, you know, we need to kick the ass of the individuals and the corporations. So now you're kicking the ass in this <laughs> way. So, <laughs> so Shibata-san, so you're running uh, uh, one of the largest asset management company. And uh, your company is very unique. I heard uh, how many nationalities do you have in your company? And uh, how many sh is a sh Japanese uh, share in your uh, asset managers? I think it's over 30 passports. But at the same time, in Tokyo, we have uh, 500 employees. The key point is that 100 of them carry passports other than Japanese passports. So probably in one respect, we can claim that we are most uh, global uh, headquarters mm. located in Japan. Mm. And actually, head of uh, HR was recruited in London. Now he lives in uh, Tokyo. Head of uh, risk management was, uh, carries a Dutch passport, uh, recruited in Singapore, mm -hmm. now live in Tokyo. And most importantly, head of uh, investments, CIO, carries two passports, Taiwanese and American. Mm -hmm. So probably if uh, we have uh, global ambition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the only way for us to become global is to make headquarters global. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I have found that all those myths about uh, Tokyo being a very difficult place to attract the foreigners mm -hmm. was just a sort of uh, you know, nonsense. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Sasuke san told about you know, the government effort to bring about change. And uh, I think, Shibata-san, you are trying to make a change by yourself, uh, you know, making your company globally. So do you think uh, this kind of uh, change is followed by the other, your competitors? Or how, can, you, you can talk about anything you know, <laughs> the private sectors can do for this uh, mobilization of more money inside the Japan. No, it is for the first time in the whole life of many investors that they are facing a textbook risk called uh, reinvestment risk. A 10-year government bonds mature, negative interest rate, you penalize. So the many of uh, big insurance companies and large commercial banks as well as the regional banks are actually in such a weird. So we don't really pretend to be, you know, answer to all the questions. But actually, the exposure to uh, international assets with appropriate hedging would certainly increase, and that is uh, something that uh, we are working very uh, so hard on. And uh, plus, the this pressure upon uh, corporate uh, governance side mm -hmm. coming from uh, institutions. I think uh, you know, we're halfway there. We are getting there, but we are not quite there yet. Uh, very often, uh, corporate management say that, uh, all right, we have uh, two external directors, box ticked, <laughs> corporate governance done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually, uh, you know, the institution need to do a good job in chasing them around. And uh, actually, GPIF is doing a very good job uh, in organizer meetings. And also, we do have sort of fair share of participation. For instance, uh, actually, I knew that it was coming. So I started the process of covering all the, you know, the Japanese companies in which we invest three years ago. So we have a live database uh, you know, of exchanges with the management going back three years. And probably we'll be you know, uh, launching some sort of product based on that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't buy data, but we actually sort of work on those data. And the key is that uh, you know, the stewardship, I think, is very important. Uh, of course, uh, when we ask uh, corporations to do their job right, we also have to do our own job right. So in terms of proxy voting, actually, we do have a governance committee uh, consisting of a majority uh, independence. 
making sure that uh, you know, we do cast a vote in the best interest of uh, shareholders. Uh, I think more to come, but actually uh, you know, money is being mobilized. The major uh, the difference between Japan and the rest of the world is the absence of a family office. Mm -hmm. And th this actually comes from a very high marginal tax, uh, inheritance tax. Anything beyond $8 million, you get 55% tax. So family office doesn't really stand. And so it's something that we need to basically think uh, carefully. Uh, but uh, individuals are also in such a weird, so they are global, the gl share of global exposure in their portfolio is on the rise. Mm -hmm. So you should come to the uh, private session of the DPM because he's at the same time finance minister and he's uh, dealing with the tax, so you can say anything. <laughs> I chair the session actually, you know. But very, very important idea. point, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, COVID governance and changing, and uh, yes, I feel that, and it's a great uh, trend. But allow me to challenge uh, Sasaki san again. Mm -hmm. Why, uh, you know, still such a case like uh, mm. Toshiba <laughs> is happening? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the case of Toshiba, exactly. It's my my portfolio oh. at the head of the SEC, yes. a Japan uh, oversight of the capital markets. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not just Toshiba. Uh, the, the problem, uh, the root cause of the problem is uh, uh, globalization of the Japanese companies. Mm. A number of uh, financial fraud or misconducts originate from subsidiaries outside Japan mm. uh, uh, due to a lack of uh, effective oversight by headquarters of the overseas uh, business. Uh, that, of course, is relevant to the effectiveness of corporate governance in nature. In, in, uh, in its the, in spite of the efforts, as Shibata-san mentioned, uh, we have taken uh, a number of measures for corporate governance, but uh, up to now, appearance or formality uh, has made lots of progress, including two independent non-executive directors. However, implementation, substantive effectiveness of the corporate governance, that's a key. And for our uh, organization, our oversight bodies, we have been paying more attention uh, to what, how effective uh, the corporate governance structure is implemented at individual or uh, corporation level. So, uh, yes, almost two years ago, uh, when I came to my uh, current position, uh, Toshiba uh, was the first case, a uh, big case for me. Uh, but we changed, uh, uh, we have changed our way of business, I mean the uh, market oversight. Uh, not just to looking at the minor issues, more forward-looking mm. approach, uh, including the, uh, for example, the Toshiba's case, uh, one of the problem is uh, relevant to M&A uh, overseas. And actually in Japan, uh, uh, due to uh, domestic markets, uh, growth, and also the, the exchange rate, some, uh, due to the macroeconomic conditions, uh, increasing number of M&A in, 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 out, out in both, uh, I remember last year's M&A uh, in, in 2015 uh, was more than uh, 2016 uh, was more than the previous year. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, 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 with this increasing M&A, uh, the that poses challenges again. Uh, how effective uh, oversight by the headquarters of the acquired companies and subsidiaries overseas. So uh, in our oversight, uh, looking at the macroeconomic changes, uh, not just M&A but also exchange rate or. Chinese economy, whatever, uh, we foresee uh, uh, we have been taking uh, preemptive measures uh, to, to uh, against such potential financial flow. Even though we don't say this is uh, illegal conduct, but uh, uh, in my view, uh, the current uh, our policy is more preemptive uh, measures rather than ex post uh, uh, measures. Because once misconduct happened, it costs a lot. <laughs> Uh, to, to individuals, investors, and mm. to the society. Mm. So preemptive measures, forward-looking, mm. uh, more mac macro perspective, uh, looking into the micro mm. potential misconduct. Such mm. approach uh, it has been in place, and then mm. we hope to, to, to uh, improve more the integrity of the Japanese capital markets. Mm. So allow me to ask uh, your non-biased viewpoint. <laughs> you know, you are non-Japanese, mm -hmm. but investing a lot into Japanese companies and real and technologies. How do you view, uh, you know, 
the effort done by government, the private sector, investors, and how uh, are you more comfortable investing in Japan? What what's your buy? It, it may sound strange, but I, I'm maximum bullish oh. uh, on Japan, mm. and uh, let me explain to you why. I think um, before the current government came in, in seven years we had six governments. So in a way, this government has to run 100 miles an hour to catch up. And uh, I agree with uh, Shivala-san, um, a, a lot has been achieved, mm. but a lot more has uh, to achieve too. So the potential for further success is real. Mm. Uh, for example, the um, uh, tourist arrivals um, in 2012 was only 6.8 million. And last year, 2016, was over 24 million. And, uh, and Japanese government has to keep on revising upwards the um, tourist arrival into and beyond the Tokyo Olympics 2020. Now, in a way, uh, we have played a modest part in, in helping that figure too, mm -hmm. because uh, six years ago, I joint venture with uh, All Nippon Airways to start the first LCC in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, Peach Aviation. And this year, we are flying six million uh, passengers. And most of our passengers are uh, new business. Mm -hmm. um, these are young people um, aged 20 to 30. 65 percent of the passengers are, are young ladies. <laughs> um, and, and it's incredible. Um, so I was saying to my friend from Osaka, said six years ago we started from zero, and today we have over 1,000 people. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And we are also feel that Japan doesn't need capital but it needs value added. Mm. And some value added that we are able to provide really fits in very well with what we're talking today. Mm. One of them is corporate governance. Having um, a friendly, uh, enlightened, um, uh, independent director uh, on a Japanese company or partner in a Japanese company really goes a long way because um, independent director doesn't mean that you have to be hostile or disagree everything mm -hmm. the, the management say. Independent director is somebody there to provide objective advice, supportive advice, and providing the guardian of the best shareholders' interests as a whole. So we have been able to play that quite well um, in, 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 in our experience. But also in terms of SMEs, a lot of SMEs in Japan have very good technology, very good high quality service, but they have not been able to go beyond the Japanese shores. Now China and the rest of Asia are big market. And we had a 30 year buy side turf in China and Southeast Asia. Then we're able to synergize some of these investing companies in Japan, help them to grow outside. Again, the Chinese um, investors are looking beyond the Chinese shores. The Chinese uh, tourists are now appearing everywhere. Japan being re really two, two and a half hours away from most uh, major cities in China mm. is the natural destination of choice for Chinese tourists. Despite sometimes ups and downs in the political tensions between China and Japan, last year Chinese tourist arrival exceeded 5 million right? and is growing 25 to 30 percent year on year. And funny enough, the uh, tensions in the Korean Peninsula, and I think my friend will probably comment <laughs> later on, mm. in a strange way will bring China and Japan closer together as we celebrate the 45th anniversary of normalization. <laughs> and finally, I want to give one more, one plug on Hong Kong because that's where I'm coming from. Japan is the ideal place for Hong Kong investors because Japanese companies invest in Hong Kong are free from capital gains tax because Hong Kong has no capital gains tax. So Hong Kong companies invest in Japan have reciprocal treatment. When I invest in Japan, I don't pay capital gains tax, right? Because Japanese companies coming to Hong Kong don't pay Japanese cap uh, Hong Kong capital gains tax. So for those international investors, investing in Japan through a Hong Kong base is also very interesting. So I think, again, Hong Kong and Japan, our lifestyle, our standards, our belief in the rule of law and the, the right corporate governance, we align the interests. But also in terms of taxation, it's a very good dream ticket as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, I 
have to admit, you know, I, I said uh, you are non-biased, but you know, you sound like uh, more patriotic about my country, so thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, going back to the issue of the uh, outbound investment, we, we talk about more about inbound investment, yes. uh, the second half of this session. Thank you for touching upon that. That's a very good uh, kickstart. Okay. So going back to the Japan's out, uh, outbound investment, the Japanese investment to the world, uh, Shibata-san, uh, Mr. Trump and uh, Prime Minister Abe agreed uh, Japan will do more investment into U.S. infrastructures, technologies, and SMEs, which create jobs. And uh, not only has a government, but uh, you know, first day, you may see it in the panel of the uh, Masayoshi Son-san. So he also committed to make uh, at least uh, 50 billion investment into the U.S. soil. So not only U.S., but Japan has a big money, you know, nine trillion deposit and the six trillion retained earnings. Uh, when you guys mobilize this, this money for the out, outbound investment uh, should go to in which area, in which part of the world? Uh, could you tell your idea? Shibata san is doing, uh, you know, invention of the products, uh, investment products associated with the geopolitical analysis. <laughs> so, could you touch upon that? Well, I think uh, number one, uh, Japanese corporations tend to invest more abroad mm -hmm. than at home when it comes to global organizations. And in fact, uh, uh, they are the ones who are shielded from a fluctuation of a currency. Because, uh, you know, last year we saw a sort of a phase where the Japanese yen went up in value, uh, theoretically making their uh, positions a bit more difficult. But in fact, uh, their profit was up. And that largely comes from the fact that uh, they have a global supply chain, very effective. Uh, so that would basically continue. The Japanese corporations would keep on investing in places where uh, they can achieve a better cost of savings. Now that the China is becoming a luxury, uh, they are sort of finding ways in which they can invest into Southeast Asia. Uh, plus, uh, we have sort of started observing uh, the companies with the retail names uh, trying to make a deeper penetration in growing market. So as far as uh, corporate Japan is concerned, I'm less co uh, worried uh, because uh, it's in their benefit to keep on doing what they're doing in large amount, and they do it very well. Of course, uh, uh, as the transaction has stated, in the case of Toshiba, they went into a territory that they didn't really understand. And uh, you know, a few hundred million dollars of exposure shouldn't really result in uh, tens of billion dollars of liability. So somebody must have cut the corner a big way. Uh, so it's the matter of governance at the top, but also governance at the bottom. Uh, but I think uh, you know, those are, uh, the Toshiba case is basically exception to the rule. Uh, one footnote to that is that uh, big corporations in Japan tend to have a lifetime employees becoming a chief executive <laughs> and lifetime employees uh, <laughs> becoming a chief financial officer and uh, lifetime sort of uh, employees are becoming uh, chief whatever without a you know direct knowledge of what's happening in the outside world but more importantly uh, sort of uh, you know standards of conducts that require the you know uh, chief financial officers are not not really there, so it's something that uh, you know we we have to be careful about going forward, especially with the companies with long history. One thing that we can learn is a case of a UK where a chief executive have to retire from the company when they retire. And there is a very good market for non-executive chairman as a result. Um, it shouldn't be a bad idea to mm -hmm. introduce some of it in Japan. Uh, the 
Investment uh, in uh, abroad, actually the key is in the areas such as the infrastructure and also leverage buyout. And that's one sort of handicap. That's maturity mismatch. Uh, most of the money that uh, Japanese have uh, have a short duration. And the short duration money cannot be invested the long term. So there ought to be some sort of a tax incentive uh, for the people to make long-term investment so that the intermediaries like ourselves can invest more into infrastructure. Okay. So some sort of maturity changing is very important. Of course, the uh, government of Japan has done a very you know, small start in uh, introducing 20-year uh, individual savings account uh, mm. system, but all in all, that's only eighty thousand dollars over uh, twenty years. So it moves a needle a little bit, but doesn't so move uh, much. So next target for Japan ought to be to make sure that there is long duration money. So now you are working hard to <laughs> mobilize the money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you are not uh, Mr. Trump. You cannot name the company and uh, you cannot order what you should do. But uh, uh, do you have a hope, you know, Japanese companies invest in what, uh, where, with large amount sleeping in the asset, uh -huh. sleeping in the uh, yeah, account? Yeah, the, from the... Uh, our agencies or government uh, perspective, we don't have we don't have a specific direction mm -hmm. uh, where to invest. But uh, uh, what is important is to to make the huge asset, financial asset in Japan, work, <laughs> make product <laughs> to to produce something. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very difficult within uh, inside Japan to find such opportunities. Uh, so or wherever, uh, of course, with uh, proper risk management, but. Uh, the, to look for the opportunities outside Japan uh, to make the Japanese financial assets work very, mm. very hard mm. for the uh, current generation and for the future generation. And mm. that's uh, the intention, the goal of mm. our government. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Nakayama-san, you are in like, charge of the national defense, national security. Mm -hmm. Steve-san is a very unique uh, idea holder. Uh, he mentioned, uh, you know, U, uh, U.S., not in U.S., China, Japan, you know, you, we are competing some, somehow, but you know, we can collaborate more for the mutual benefit. So, uh, what about you know, investing more into China in peaceful way as a national security related politician? What do you say? Very difficult question and very <laughs> difficult answer. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I, I think uh, uh, these guys talk about. Uh, sexiest point <laughs> to invest Japan mm. and I'm talking about the, the, the risk, risk mm. of uh, investing investing uh, our country I think and uh, uh, but uh, uh, always if you grab the treasure tre ar around the treasure box always the snakes around <laughs> mm. so uh, for example, if you go to the Middle East, mm. you can see the Israel, very attractive country, very mm. high technology, every invest and every uh, human resources over there. Mm. But uh, see around, it's mm. the same thing. Mm. Uh, same thing happening in our region, I mm. guess. And uh, uh, music without instrument is politics without armament. Mm. So uh, if we're talking about, talking about the uh, Chinese, mm. uh, we have to talk about the South China Sea and also the, uh, the Chinese PLA activities around there and also the cyber attacks. And, uh, but uh, we, the Japan, and uh, our prime minister think uh, the crisis management mm. is most important. Uh, we have a po what, what is important when you invest to someone or the country mm. the political stable is the most important mm. key we are not the country controlled by the one communist party we are not country who uh, arrest former president or former prime minister uh, we the uh, maybe once 
<laughs> but uh, but uh, we never execute, execute him. And uh, so uh, uh, our country is uh, uh, the, 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 the profit and benefit of you is a trust. Mm. And uh, we, after the World War II, why we, we, the Japan, the country economy going up? Because of the US, US Japan alliance. Mm. And uh, always the US behind us. And uh, even after the World War, World War II, the, even the third generation, we never know the World War II. But we really thank to the United States, always behind us. So, uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, we, the Japan, mm. uh, turns a crisis into an opportunity, mm. and uh, we, the Japanese government, mm. or us supporting mm. uh, your activity strongly mm. uh, from the trust, mm. the point of view. Mm. So carefully, but steadily, we can do better together. Yes, of course. Mm. And uh, to, to make a political stable, mm. uh, this morning you saw the news uh, from the uh, CNN or whatever. President Trump, uh, if there is a circumstances set, he is going to talk with uh, directly to the Kim Jong-un, uh, this makes a uh, new uh, resource for mm. the peace mm. of the, uh, uh, the East Asia, mm. I guess. And uh, they, the North Koreans want to uh, direct bilateral meeting mm. with the United States. And uh, uh, if it's possible, it's, uh, uh, it, the, 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 our part is the only one part the Cold War still exists. Mm. So uh, this uh, flame is going to be go, go to be a next stage. Mm. So there is also a, a, the big chance. Mm. And also uh, we are going to invest uh, the security on cyber and also the, the uh, investing the human resources to the who has a tech technique. Mm. Mm. So this is also, a, I think, a, Thank you. a part Thank you. to invest. So going uh, to the next phase, it's about uh, inbound investment, what you touch upon. So, uh, you know, Japan's corporate governance, thanks to Sasaki-san, is getting better. And uh, thanks to Nakayama-san, we have a very stable politics and government. Thank you. But uh, we have a declining population and aging population. So uh, do you think uh, aging and a declining population will be a biggest hurdle for the outside investors to decide uh, making investment in Japan, or you know, we can we can get over with that. And uh, you have any suggestions or insights? Well, it, it, I think it's both a challenge and an opportunity. Mm. Uh, challenge is that the um, if you're losing 0.2 percent every mm -hmm. year mm. Um, it, by t you know 2050 it will be a very different type of community. That will have a lot of impact on infrastructure and also the property market. Mm. But that will also mean that Japan need to uh, speed up in uh, automation, robotics, mm -hmm. and other, other, mm. um, other means. And also um, uh, immigration policy, mm. and also the, uh, what we call the silver industry. You know, um, services and products to cater for the, the more aging population. Mm. But the opportunity is because Japan is already ahead mm. in the silver yep. industry. Mm. China and the rest of Asia, mm. many parts of Asia, also going through a mm. similar democratic, uh, uh, demographic uh, challenges. So I think we are also tapping um, uh, innovative uh, products and technologies from Japan for the other markets in Asia. We are investing uh, in uh, nursing homes mm. uh, in Japan. Mm. And we hope that we can bring some of the experience mm. into, into Hong Kong and China too. Mm. So I think the, the challenges, in a way, also breeds opportunities. Mm -hmm. In another way where Japan is leading is uh, renewable energy and uh, energy conservation. Japan is an undoubted leader. Um, the rest of the world uh, can also benefit from some of uh, Japanese experience. We are also investor in renewable uh, energy, and we are big investors in energy efficiencies uh, across uh, the region. Mm. And we hope to work with Japanese companies to springboard that mm. track record in the other parts of Asia too. Mm. Mm. 
Then finally, I think one um, opportunity and challenge in Japan is that whilst um, Tokyo, Osaka, Nagoya are booming, some of the more rural uh, countryside. communities, countryside, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, needs a lot more investments, mm -hmm. both in terms of infrastructure and also consumer mm. and tourists. And that's, I think, where we where we are interested. We are interested to invest in um, the more uh, remote part in Japan to contribute into community redevelopment and also uh, bring um, new tourists, new spenders, new discoveries um, uh, uh, into these regions. And we are we are coming up with some new innovations mm. using, uh, for example, virtual reality yeah. to to uh, highlight and mm. introduce some of the iconic locations in Japan which are not yet popular to many tourists so that before they go they can see those iconic locations through virtual reality um, uh, uh, programs mm -hmm. so we are trying to, to to plug into these opportunities too good so uh, I think has uh, touched upon the Japanese government is doing uh, uh, you know kind of I say uh, taking people from outside since last year for the first time since last year we are allowed to foreign house helpers to come in with a special visa. Then from this year, nurses and caregivers. So Japan is now slowly and steadily taking people from outside. And uh, as he has mentioned, you know, the challenge is opportunity. So thanks to the, I say, as he has mentioned, booming in the big city and uh, shrinking in the countryside, we have 8 million empty houses. 10% of them has a very nice location. <laughs> beach house, mountain house, riverside house, empty house. Why not you come buy that? <laughs> Eight million of them. So, so I think you know, as he has mentioned, the tourism can be a, at least temporarily fix that population problem. So we are now having 25 million tourists. Uh, Six percent of them are coming mainly from uh, China. You know, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong. Uh, so, you know, as he has, as you have mentioned, in that sense, uh, we have to keep a better relationship with Japan, uh, with China, and uh, having, uh, you know, more uh, interaction through the tourism, maybe uh, improve the mutual understanding yes. and, uh, you know, understanding of mutual importance yes. uh, of both countries, maybe uh, that's a good fix. And uh, Shibata, I heard you have a very strong view on Japanese uh, population problems. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, actually, uh, what is the area that uh, foreign uh, corporations should uh, make an investment in? Uh, Japan. Actually, Victor is spot on. Japan is short of hotels. That's a huge issue. So very often, if uh, somebody is there in Tokyo to do business with the five nights uh, uh, reservations, business goes well, he wants to extend his visit for another week, he has to move. So the supply of hotels in Tokyo and also in various uh, towns in Japan, including Kyoto, is posing huge challenge. When there is a challenge, there is always a very good uh, investment opportunity. Now the uh, hotels in, uh, in Shiga Prefecture is smiling because uh, they stay there for the you know, tourists to stay there to visit uh, Kyoto. So don't forget to harvest the quickest possible sort of uh, crops. Uh, and also, Victor is spot on when he mentioned that uh, aging population poses challenge as well as opportunities. And it is no coincidence that uh, General Electric uh, decided to place a R&D facility in Japan for medical equipment with the, you know, actually sort of uh, in a growing sort of a proportion of the population, there will be shortage of uh, hospital beds. When there's a shortage of hospital beds, what do they do? Machines at home will play a greater role and what best place to test the new ideas 
And actually, you know, if uh, it's good enough for GE, it should be very good for <coughs> other uh, companies. And also, oh, very often, the Japanese corporations are now under pressure to focus on their areas of expertise. And therefore, some of the good pieces, such as medical equip equipment, uh, will become available. And actually, uh, KKR bought one of them, and probably more to come. So increased pressure from a corporate governance standpoint would actually mean that there will be a very good investment opportunities for corporations and the private equities. Uh, population, working population is going to decline, probably from 64 million to 61 by 2030. All right. But actually, uh, government of Japan is doing the right thing in trying to mobilize 3.5 million female workforce. There's a big M shape. Uh, people get married, <laughs> retire. <laughs> By the time a children get old enough, there's no place. So uh, government is trying to uh, their best to mobilize the female sort of workforce. At the same time, uh, when you see a newspaper report saying that the Japan is short of nurseries, that's because government tell press that the Japan is short of nurseries. What the press doesn't really tell you is that the government has a plan to increase the capacity of nursery by half a million by 20, <coughs> I think, 20. So work is being done. Would that solve a population problem forever? No. But actually, it uh, carries the Japanese economy for about five years, at least. Uh, Tamara-san and the uh, Deputy Prime Minister is honestly saying that the work from it is getting easier. Okay? We don't pronounce the word immigration. <laughs> But uh, we use the word work from it very often. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, very, very good point. So another sex point I'd like to touch upon is, uh, you know, related to the inbound tourism is uh, IR. How many of you know the w word IR? IR is an invention by the Singapore government. It's a, uh, you know, integral resort. Mm. It's not casino, but it has a casino. So we don't call it casino, <laughs> but like, like, like a work, work permit, you know. But it disguises a word. And, uh, so uh, Japanese government uh, recently legalized the casino. So uh, we'll be having an IR, IR integral resort. That the definition of the integral resort is that you know, casino part must be at least 3%, at most 3% of the total uh, resort. So Singapore, uh, have you been, uh, how many of you have been to Singapore? Uh, Marina Bay Sands, yes, something like that. It's an integral result. So Japan will do uh, much more than that. So uh, I don't, I don't say uh, how many and where, but you know, one site uh, is uh, considered to be in countryside, and uh, you know uh, the beauty of Japan, uh, said by the Adrian Zeka, the founder of the Aman Resort, is that Japan has four elements: food, culture nature, climate. So with these four uh, elements, if Japan has something like IR, they're going to be a huge success. So there's many has an international casino operator. Many of them are here in, co in the conference. They would like to make a huge investment, like 50 billion each side. So you know, uh, of course, you know, if uh, it built in near to Tokyo, big success. But uh, as uh, he mentioned, maybe in one in countryside, uh, try to revitalizing the region with such four elements, food, culture, nature, climate. So I think that can be a very interesting. And uh, the, the person who need to work over there must speak English and know some hospitality. Maybe we issue more work permit for those people, and the English-speaking population will be increasing. And the reason why we have more uh, falling house helpers that you know not only has say cooking and dishwashing and cleaning uh, child care child care by English will be starting so we speak more English and uh, we'll be having uh, diversity of the people who are very 
uh, you know, assimilating to our culture. So Japan is uh, not, uh, you know, uh, concern accumulating place for the population. So uh, we are running out of time. So finally, uh, we want to move to the uh, geopolitical, uh, you know, challenges or, you know, challenge can be opportunity. So Nakayama-san, so since we are here, uh, not only in the uh, Japan session, private or public, uh, but also, you know, global sessions or U.S. sessions, people talk a lot about North Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, our Deputy Prime Minister mentioned a little bit about uh, North Korea and uh, Japanese yen. Uh, it was very tricky co comment. I couldn't <laughs> repeat it. But uh, mm -hmm. do you think uh, Japan is okay uh, with neighbors? Mm. <laughs> I think we are okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it seems to me this discussion, I'm a Japanese politician, so I should say, welcome you are in best. But uh, they are saying that. I'm not saying that. But the whole this group, what we call trust, I mean the, the honest. I think honesty is the Japanese uh, people's uh, the good point. So I think you can trust us and uh, please invest more. And, uh, and uh, also the question about the North Korea. I think uh, North Korea, uh, Kim Jong-un, in his mind, he wanted to be like a Japanese, I mean the Japan as a system. After the World War II, uh, the US uh, uh, came to our country the General MacArthur control uh, our country. Uh, first, General MacArthur uh, planned to execute our emperor, Hirohito, uh, but he didn't. And, uh, but also, they made a constitution, and also the, they made a system to control our government and the citizens. And the emperor Hirohito uh, is a, it's going to be a symbol of the people. North Korea <coughs> learned by our history. The Kim Jong-un would like to open their country, but also they would like to follow our history. So wh what I'm saying is Kim Jong-un wants to be their emperor, their symbol, so they can protect the, the territory, the borders, 38 degree line, and also the, the, the border between the China and uh, also, they won't permit or understand of the world arena, uh, international arena, uh, that they can uh, they they will establish a dynasty of Kim family, I guess. Then, uh, for example, the six-party talks. There is a U.S., Russia, China, the big three, and uh, Japan, Korea. Uh, I mean, the South Korea and North Korea. If uh, U.S. close to shake hand with the North Korea, China and Russia will upset. If the Russia shake hand with North Korea, China, U.S. upset. If the China shake hand, the we, the others upset. So this ba unbalanced balance is now it's it's uh, uh, stable. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, but 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 the. the open the can mm. of the history of the Cold War. Mm. I think uh, the, if the Trump mm. made a decision mm. and the approach to North Korea, mm. if it bilateral talk is going to mm. succeed it, mm. the, the, our area, region, mm. will have another uh, future stage, mm. I think. Thank you. Thank Great you. comment. Thank you. So lastly, we have another five minutes. So uh, Sasaki-san. So in order to change the corporate governance and uh, you know, management of the corporate, way of the management of the, and the way of the working style of the Japanese company, I have a strong uh, feeling that we need a shareholder, more shareholder activism, act, activism. So as a you know, watchdog, <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you say, welcome more shareholder activism in the Japanese market, uh, frankly? Yeah, yeah. The 
uh, again, the corporate governance uh, needs to be more effective and efficient mm -hmm. in substance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and for that, uh, uh, institutional investors and activists uh, who provide pressures and who have more substantive engagements uh, with the uh, board of directors mm. of the companies, mm. I think that's uh, one of the uh, source of the pressures. I think mm. that's uh, the goal. Of course, the, any shareholders, uh, activists, whatever, whoever, uh, should comply with laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, as long as they, they do, uh, I see uh, we welcome the uh, more uh, substantive engagements and pressures uh, uh, to move forward uh, the effective corporate governance among the Japanese companies. Great, thank you. How many minutes do I have? Two, Two minutes, okay. <laughs> one question. So if you have any questions, you have a chance. You name one person. One minute. Uh, uh, two minutes, uh, sorry. We must be very punctual. We are Japanese, so. <laughs> okay, please, go ahead. Quick, 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 quick question, please. But he's with me. <laughs> uh, I, I'm from Mozambique, uh, and uh, well, what do you think about Africa, Japan, and Africa relations? Uh, who do you want to talk? To? Well, uh, I don't know who uh. is is <laughs> more one person. One person. You can, more you can name. in terms of investing in Africa. Yeah. What is the future? Yeah. Um, Japan is investing in my country. Okay, we have uh, 50 seconds. So. Please, yeah. Okay, we we are we always have a Tokyo International Conference for African Development, which which we call TICAD, and uh, we accelerate to invest Africa, of course, and uh, we have uh, lots of products uh, from Panasonic or Sony or whatever, but uh, they need a resource from your continent. I mean, the Africa, and Africa's life uh, directly hit to uh, our life of economy. So uh, we always thank Africa and also Mozambique also. And uh, we are going to have a 2020 Olympic Games and lots of athletes from Af Africa. And also after la later, uh, 2025, uh, Osaka is going to uh, invite the Expo uh, 2025. So uh, we are going to see each okay. other okay. in Osaka. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the session. I, I said best session. Now you know that. Thank you. <laughs>